Hello folks, uh, I'm Andres. Several of you may know me from uh, our uh, tropical birding tours that I normally lead in Ecuador or in um, Brazil in uh, some places. Uh, as you know right now tropical birding tours is doing this nice thing about these virtual tours and I'm about to take you in one of the tours that I like the most. If you've been with me in other places you may have heard from me that one of my favorite destinations is Argentina here in uh, South America so this time you will be with me to this tour Northwest Argentina that has an extension to the Iguazu Falls um, and I'll be showing you parallel to some pictures and some slides of um, the tour also the um, track that we do in this tour and for that I will start telling you that this tour um, doesn't start in Buenos Aires, of course you have to fly into Buenos Aires which is right about here but most of the tour takes place here in the northwest of Argentina and it has a extension that is about three four days to the Iguazu Falls which are right here in this area um, so we will be going and I'll be showing you how this tour starts in Tucumán and progressively moves up north all the very top of the country, top northmost part of the country in the border with Bolivia, right there. Um, and uh, I want to show you as an overview why this tour is so nice and rich. And the fact is that we go through several, several different ecosystems, starting with some yungas forest, which is a type of cloud forest you can see right here in these areas. Uh, green, green, green. When we go over the pass into the Andes, into the high Andes, we go into dry, dry areas that are really rich for some specific or special birds. We move down towards another portion of Yungas, move up again the Andes to some uh, high altiplanos that are really beautiful for some special birds there, move back through Yungas into some more disturbed areas and some more Yungas in here to finally do a nice trip up north through the uh, world famous Quebrada de Humahuaca and the high altiplanos of the province of Jujuy having some uh, lakes to um, explore and to scan and also some high mountains to um, go look for some cool birds before returning to the city of Salta to fly to um, Iguazu. And so let's start with this track because I will be showing you some pictures right now but going together with us in this map. For that I will be playing also a little bit of music that I normally play from Argentina while we're on tour. I hope you like it. In any case, let's start. This is what I was telling you. We'll start with the Yungas forest in the area of Rio Los Sosa. Look at this river here, it's called Rio Los Sosa, right? Um, and notice how the forest here is really dense, really rich. It has a lot of passerines there that we look for. Um, but one of the main things that we go for here is uh, one of the main targets of the whole trip for several people that are looking for their last deeper. And um, this is the one. This is what we look for. A Rufus throated dipper. This was photographed by Sam Woods. For once, Sam took a nice, decent picture. He's, a, he's an excellent photographer. I just uh, love uh, teasing him. But in any case, we look for this particular bird in the very first day of the tour. So starting a tour with a uh, big target is always very, very nice. So um, uh, we have good chances of seeing that in the first couple days. But then when we go towards the other uh, Yungas areas, we have another backup chance. In any case, it's nice to um, try for this one. Um, these areas are also famous for this particular bird, which is a um, endemic to um, Argentina, a yellow striped brush finch, that we have a hundred percent success rate <laughs> on this particular bird here. It's fairly common in these yungas, but it is an important one. We only can see it here, and that's it. So um, we go for it, 
and we have a chance to look for other things that are in this forest like these uh, subspecies of black-backed grosbeak, very cool bird or a brown-backed, uh, uh, brown-capped red star, uh, one of the most common voices in this uh, Yungas forest or Rufus browed warbling finch. This um, group of passerines are very nice in this forest. Um, we spend a full morning, probably the afternoon, looking for these birds and all things together. These are just examples, of course. And we finished the day scanning this very cool lake, looking for some other uh, waterfowl that we can start seeing in these uh, regions. Let me just show you. So the path that we took us to Kuman here, the airport is right there. We start with the night in the hotel there and move up this valley. And when we finish birding in this valley, this is the um, lake we will be um, scanning at. And we'll finish today in Tafí del Valle. Um, in this lake, we can have several species of coots, several species of ducks. Um, like this is one of the main targets for some people. The rosy-billed pochard, for instance. Um, yeah, and then we finish the day in the very nice city of Tafí del Valle with obviously uh, awesome views of the Andes, a uh, very comfortable hotel um, that we spend two nights at. Um, and we have a chance to start with some of the nice uh, cuisine of uh, Argentina. You know, it's very famous for uh, the steaks that are big, juicy, really, really nice. Um, together with some wine. If you are a wine lover, Argentina is the destination. You can have so good, so good wine um, for quite inexpensive prices. So um, we'll do that. So the next day, from here, from Tafí del Valle, we explore these particular areas of the Andes here, where. Um, we'll be looking for some more of the Argentinian endemics. And those come in the shape of, um, well, I'll show you the endemics in a minute, but we'll start having these Andean named birds like this Andean tinamu. This tour is really, really good for um, some uh, tinamus. We normally see up to four, even five species of tinamus. Regularly seen for sure three. Um, four, many times. Five, with some luck. But seeing tinamus is something really good. So this is the Andean tinamu, really early in the morning in these areas in uh, Infiernillo. Um, and we also ha can have these very, very beautiful and picturesque birds, the um, red-tailed comet, which is our first go at this bird. Um, but we'll see it in a few places in this uh, trip. One of my main uh, Personal targets, I mean, I always love seeing these birds, one of my favorites is a black siskin we have a chance to see in this particular place. And we'll start with several of these for narrates that are high andes for narrates for some people kind of boring and challenging, but for me it's a very nice family too, to see this uh, plain breasted earth creeper. Um, there are not many hummingbirds in the tour, but some of the, but the hummingbirds that we have in this tour are very, very, very nice. Um, like this giant hummingbird that we typically see here. And this is when I start with the endemics. We have a chance to see several endemics of Argentina in this particular portion of the tour in this particular morning. We have, for instance, this Moreno ground doves, Moreno's ground dove, or Steinbeck's canastero. Plus, on a more picturesque side, we have Tucumán mountain finch, which is uh, typically seen here. And uh, this is um, one of the coolest birds that we have in this particular day, which is the um, white browed tapacula, another of the endemics. And this one here is not like the typical tapaculas that are very reclusive and shy. This one stands on top of rocks. So, yeah, it's very nice. Okay, already, we cross into another section of uh, the Andes, but over the past we find this uh, Monte Desert with this beautiful cacti and um, some beautiful scenery that uh, seems very dry, but it holds a few very interesting birds that are unique to this ecosystem. Um, like, for instance, this uh, cinnamon warbling finch. Just to put you on the map, at this point, 
we are over here. We have done this already and we are over here around the Amaicha del Valle here. And we start finding these birds in these thorny areas that we don't have a chance to see elsewhere. So cinnamon warbling finch, for instance, another of the Argentinian endemics. And uh, some more widely distributed birds like uh, a long-tailed meadowlark, always beautiful. <laughs> this, is a, this is a cool bird I like a lot and uh, it is uh, always close to some uh, wetlands is a uh, spectacle tyrant with that look um, <laughs> very cool bird and you see remember this uh, cacti that I was telling you well there is a cacti loving woodpecker this white fronted woodpecker that we um, always find uh, around these these areas for the cotinga lovers these uh, areas that are not as rich in terms of that family we do have this cool one called the uh, white tip plant cutter um, we typically find and we finish the uh, morning in this wine valley this is our hotel it's actually a wine resort uh, you can see from the um, balconies of your room the uh, extensive fields of grapes about to be turned into nice wine and uh, we in fact do some uh, cool thing a, a cool thing this afternoon uh, we visit these um, wineries and we have a shortish tour to some wineries and some tasting uh, since I'll be normally driving I only drink one or two bottles um, but uh, we do some nice tasting there um, here you can see some of our clients enjoying some of the different wineries that are around here and different wineries obviously have different um, types and uh, at the end of the visit we enjoy more of the birds and see more birds due to the wine um, another one of the wineries here uh, more industrial we can say that is this one here Piatelli. and we do afterwards a little bit of birding around the town we can have some more open ground birds like the blue and yellow tanager this is one of the target targets of this place the Chaco earth creeper I know it's not as nice but then hey um, ultramarine grosbeak is sometimes seen around there but the uh, end of the day we go for this dude here and it's not often that we see it but we have a chance this Chaco owl it's um, a mega bird um, not too far from the hotel so we'll we'll give it a go but we have to um, it has to be fairly late in the night because at that time of the year in Argentina we'll have long days so the next day we are here so the hotel is right there in Cafayate, this is the wine area and the next day we'll be doing this right here there's not a lot of birding done in the morning because we have a pretty long drive but we do this, you see this path here? you see these red areas or rufous areas here? is one of the most beautiful areas called Quebrada de las Conchas and this doesn't have one stretch that where the uh, landscape is not beautiful and so you can see here uh, in the first tour that I did Sam Woods was accompanying me and he was uh, very um, much into the scenery taking pictures and uh, this is one of the things about this place in every single corner there is something you want to stop at and photograph so for the whole morning we're riding not burning too much but enjoying this incredible uh, environment of Quebrada de las Conchas that in fact for some people that have seen this movie is called the uh, this movie called Wild Tales recommendable this takes place in this particular bridge some of you may recognize it we always stop around these areas ah. again as I told you in every corner you want to stop and just take pictures of this is called the amphitheater very nice formation with a very nice um, acoustic sound 
And a couple of the birds that we do see along this ride this morning include these borrowing parrots. The size of macaws really are pretty big, pretty big, and they, they nest on the cliffs of these uh, rocky areas. When we move forward, we have already gone through this Quebrada de las Conchas here and gone down in these areas to El Carril and then move up through some yungas. The time of the day that we cross through here is not the best for birding, so we just let it go, but we start birding around this area here that can hold a few things like this uh, Rufus bellied saltator. Uh, quite rare and difficult bird to find, but this is the main chance that we have for that one. And we can start having some of these picturesque um, Sierra finches. This is called the gray hooded Sierra finch. We, uh, that day, we always have empanadas. One of the typical things is empanadas salteñas in this particular region. And we eat probably 20 of those. They're pretty small. <laughs> Maybe I eat some eight. <laughs> In this particular day and finish the day in this little tiny town um, of um, Kachi right here so we have gone through all these areas late in the afternoon try to find some stuff but seriously the main targets will come the next early morning so we finish here that uh, day is a very nice town as I told you uh, the accommodation is good, it's very nice, um, but then the next day is when we really start. We start pre-done, we actually stock up in some uh, uh, food and have breakfast in the field, right here in the field. It's pretty cold, oof, but the rewards are really nice. And this is what I mean, elegant crested tinamo will be the very main, main target of that morning um, we have really good chances of seeing this guy and uh, but we need to be there really early this is uh, another of Sam Wood's photo it's probably the best photo of this uh, Tinamu it's very nice elegant crested Tinamu and it's not only that Tinamu that we have but we have a chance also for this guy Tony throated dotterel um, the uh, shorebird aficionados they love this particular species and they want to see it also, some of the South American shorebirds that are unique to South America, these um, least seed snipe. We also have a chance to find another of the endemics of Argentina. Uh, very boring, but it is a tapaculo, it's called a Sandy Gallito. And another Furnari, oh, hold on, this is a pipit, a short billed pipit. It's not endemic to Argentina, but it's one of the things that we find that morning. And this is the endemic that I was telling you about the white-throated cachalote. Mm -hmm. Have a chance to see other fauna like this Andean hairy armadillo and uh, we finish the day here in uh, the city of Sal uh, Salta where we'll um, move on farther down, farther north later on. At this point we have done this track here. Back north and we'll finish the day right here in El Huayco area in uh, San Lorenzo. So over the next couple of days we will start to um, from here from uh, San Lorenzo, the area of Salta. Birding north in uh, pretty focused yungas birding because there's still several several specialties that we are missing uh, at this point and so between Salta and Jujuy we have those species and we'll be uh, doing some birding that it is more like the typical focus birding and not getting distracted by beautiful landscape even though it's nice anyways but it is the main focus birding and so we start with this um, hotel remember that I was telling you that from the balcony we can see some really cool stuff and uh, it is key for several things like uh, well by night these uh, mountain forest the screech owl that we um, typically get it's a little tough but we, we normally do 
But from the balcony, we have a chance to get this guy here, that it is a cream pack woodpecker in the bucket list of all the people that comes that come to um, to this tour. From the balcony as well, a few things like a crested Picard or golden billed saltators, um, among several other things. But then we move on farther north and we touch other portions that are a mix of forests between yungas and some chaco and we can get things like this beast is a giant antrike. If you're familiar with um, squirrel cuckoo for instance, it is basically the same size. Yeah, just as big. But look at the bill. It eats the squirrel cooks for breakfast. <sighs> Not really. Um, and uh, we have a chance to scan a few more lakes in uh, sort of lowland areas that uh, can hold this uh, baby here that I always like getting. It's a ringed teal. Uh, you can see a black cap warbling finches and this ghostly looking bird that is a white monjita, beautiful tyrant. And another one, a yellow brow tyrant in the same area. And then we move definitely north to this area here of um, Jujuy. It's the poorest uh, province in um, Argentina and the most remote. So the accommodation from here it is not as nice as previously, but it's still comfortable. And so this is the very last forest burn that we'll do because we need to find this guy here, a red-faced guan. I don't have a picture, but we always look for Yungas pygmy owl as well. Uh, or this guy is lender tail wood star, dot-fronted woodpecker, fulvous-headed brush finch, um, plumbius tyrant, and is one of the best places to see plush crested jays. Uh, it's just an awesome bird. Again, we'll uh, get distracted by this common bird, <laughs> a red-tailed comet. And uh, we should find some more of these furnarids in these yungas, but we are done with the yungas uh, after finding this spot-breasted thornbird. And from here on, we move north and we turn Andean, and I mean Andean. So. One of these days, we take this route here, north, and we go through one of UNESCO's heritage sites, the Quebrada de Humahuaca. And the next three, four days is very, very Andean, beautiful, one of the nicest places in the whole tour and probably the nicest section of the tour uh, for me. Um, the one long drive that we have that is from Yungas all the way to High Andes here, it is never boring. Even though we tend, we have to cover a lot of ground, we stop for cool things like this. Um, Trojan Llama, this guy here, is a, is a handicraft uh, shop and where they serve and we can eat some uh, llama stew, for instance. Or uh, our clients typically get and buy some handicrafts. But then soon we move farther north to Cerro de Siete Colores and we have another of these awesome places that are just idyllic. Um, yep, like this. It's impossible again not to stop in every corner because every different angle you want to photograph. That's basically how it is. Uh, farther north, some different rock formations for sure a great selfie time for that or just like here we have again Sam Woods <laughs> uh, being uh, touristy as well so in terms of birds in that particular day we uh, tend to find some cool stuff as well even though we drive quite a bit and we do a lot of sightseeing we do find some chance to do some birding we get some aplomata falcons, some scenarios harriers and a black headed Sierra Finch, Hooded Sierra Finch, Mountain Caracaras, Morning Sierra Finches. And then we are quite far north, let me show you. We get to this particular point here in Abrapamba, where we'll spend one night in a very basic uh, hotel. Um, quite unique, you, you'll see it. At some point you have to come with me. Eh? Um, and then the next day, we go before dawn and drive for about an hour and a half to get to here. 
This Laguna de los Pozuelos is the name. A very famous, very, very famous and huge where we uh, go for flamingos and several other things, waterfowl and, and uh, water related birds. And these air, drier areas here is where the picture is, where I'm trying to see from a long distance some flamingos. The scenery is magnificent, as you can see. Um, endless fields. But in terms of birds, what we find here are really nice birds, including three species of flamingo. This is probably the easiest to identify, the uh, Puna flamingo, right here with a yellow bill and black tip, very, very obvious. And then we have some uh, Chilean flamingos. How you tell them apart easily? Look at the pink, bright pink knees of those. And then we have Andean flamingos with yellow legs. You see that? And if we start having everything named Andean flamingos, we have here Andean geese, very, very blurry, of course. <laughs> Andean Avocet, Andean Negrito, and a few other Andean things. We have some waterfowl like crested ducks, and uh, we have giant coots. But one of the best birds to find in this area is one that we rarely ever see. This guy here, the uh, very rare and difficult horned coot. I've only seen it really once in four tours, in five tours. Um, so it's um, magical when we when we do find it. Okay. Um, other things that we typically find around the Laguna de los Pozuelos are the Puna Rias, some of the most iconic birds in uh, in South America. So um, uh, have a chance for another Tinamu, in this case ornate. So that we move on all the way to the border with Bolivia. This is a, a tiny little town there in the border of Bolivia. You can see here the river. We're in the Argentina side and all these mountains here are the uh, Bolivian side uh, so that you can see it on the map. We went uh, here on the lake and we moved all the way there and finished here in La Quiaca, which is a fairly big town. and. Um, here, the next day, we do one of the nicest days of uh, the tour uh, for me. This particular day, we take the car and we go through these plains here and up the mountains around here to Abra Leisoite. And the panorama, the, the views are incredible. We get to be in the highest spot of the whole tour at 15,000 feet right here and um, get some panoramic views that are very, very unique. There are a ton of cool birds and a couple interesting things as well. Your participants enjoying some uh, views, but this is what we want. This is the key thing. What we are looking for is the diadem sandpiper plover, and this is the day to get it at the end of the tour. And so a lot of people are nervous about it, and of course they should be because it's a tough bird to find. We um, regularly see it, but it is tough. Uh, when we see it, we see it well. Um, the holy grail of South American shorebirds for some people. We get all the things like uh, Andean Hill Star, Brown Backed uh, Mockingbird, we have some uh, cute citron headed yellow finches, and of course, Andean Condors, where in the Andes they soar overhead all the time. At 15,000 feet, we get mountain parakeets, <laughs> imagine some more earth creepers and um, tit tyrants like this yellow bill. And some specialties of this particular spot in the extreme north of Argentina, red-backed Sierra finch, uh, rock earth creeper again, and a straight-billed earth creeper, plus some vicuñas, we tend to see a ton of these guys. Now, this is kind of a the nicest looking bird for me in this particular tour is a wedge tail hill star. Uh, such a beautiful hummingbird. We get it by the end of the tour. Um, yeah, it's uh, 
quite compliant. It uh, comes into tape and it's very, very nice. Very nice to see this uh, this bird. Um, kind of to finish the day or the tour in a high note. Because from here on, we have 4,600 kilometers back to Salta the next day. Uh, we get to do a little bit of birding, but basically what we do is start heading back from the extre extreme north of Argentina and the border of Bolivia all the way through here. And in one go, we, well, in one day, we finish in here, in Salta, um, so that the next day we either finish the main tour and the people that join the extension fly from Salta to here. the Iwasu Falls. Yep. We'll be going through that. So the Iguazu Falls is a whole new world. And we're done with the High Andes, we're done with the Yungas Forest. We go into this Atlantic forest of the um, of the uh, Argentinian side here around the um, beautiful falls um, yep this is what we're talking about a full new thing in these three four days is a 50 50 birding and sightseeing because I mean whoever doesn't enjoy this is just crazy we stay in a hotel that it is right there in the park um, whereas as you can see here this is the national park the Iwasu National Park and this is the city that you fly in but we get to stay in the hotel that is right there in the park and it faces right here it faces the uh, this is the hotel right here right the fall in, into the falls is just a beautiful beautiful um, thing to watch so um, here the main focus as I told you is not birding the main focus not sightseeing is 50 50 um, <laughs> here are some of our clients with a background of the waterfalls from the hotel grounds and the balcony we do have some very very cool birds that we look for like this ochre colored piculette or this blonde crested woodpecker um, green build or also called red bellied toucans and blue manakins and rufous headed mud moth and uh, uh, some more obscure birds of the in, of uh, inside forest uh, like the southern ant pipit but we spend a lot of time just scanning uh, just seeing the waterfalls there is plenty of trails around in those waterfalls that are very nice for you to watch great dusky swifts with the waterfalls in the background or like this one here is a great dusky sweep that I managed to get photographed just manning through the mist of the waterfalls because they actually nest in these cliffs right here in between the water so you see a ton of these uh, birds here many times we manage to go and do this boat ride if people want um, which gets you really really wet <laughs> but it's a nice experience here we're doing that or just exploring through the upper trails of the um, of the national park again every corner has its own charm it's just very 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 beautiful yeah look at this I mean it's just incredible uh, it's a speechless uh, you, you you end up speechless in here uh, reportedly um, Eleanor Roosevelt when uh, she saw the waterfalls for the first time the first thing she said was poor Niagara <laughs> and you can see why this is um, a portion of the waterfalls that is called the devil's throat which is right in there so you see that the river comes from here and obviously because of the um, uh, strength of the river and the water it opens up like that but in this particular corner it just falls down like that so we get to explore these areas um, from many different viewpoints but then we also do some birding again 
and uh, we go to visit a hummingbird garden to get these mangoes or green-headed tanagers or planalto hermits some more plush crested jays but this time really up close again some trogons um, because we're in a much more tropical it's actually subtropical forest but it is it, it, you will feel a lot more tropical with the species like these also um, yellow fronted woodpecker and that's it um, a lot of people like spending a couple nights in uh, Buenos Aires and so that they can explore the craziness of the uh, big city looking for a football looking for a steak looking for uh, the beautiful architecture is really up to you so i hope that you have enjoyed this virtual tour and um, that's it thank you guys